Scott Catino. He has an extensive, great biography on the website, which you can use the QR code on your uh, program to, to learn more about him. But he is in the intelligence world, in the Department of Defense world, um, and has done a lot of great work with the FBI, and, and he's done a lot of very impressive things as a military man also. Today, he is going to speak to us about transforming higher education. This is something that is really exciting, and we're be speaking uh, with uh, our leadership, with our lieutenant governor next week about this. This is a bill that we're hoping to get going. We're bringing some people in from out of town to meet with our legislators. So Scott, if you would come up, and he is from the Mobile area. He runs Faith Family Coalition. I'm sorry, I don't have my notes in front of me. Close enough. Close enough. He'll, he'll tell you what I missed. And um, please welcome Thank Scott. Thank you. Thank you so much, Becky. I really appreciate this opportunity, uh, Ms. Hunis. Uh, also, uh, Eagle Form of Lower Alabama, thank you so much, Carol and Charles Wilson. You've done such extraordinary work and it certainly influenced me standing for these important principles of our Constitution. So very, very important. And the subject that I'm going to talk about today is transforming higher education. I really believe the issue is simply this. If we don't transform it, it's going to continue to transform us and not in the direction that we would like. We're talking about transforming this country into something unrecognizable, something closer to Venezuela and Cuba than anything we ever thought of or cherished as being America with its constitutional freedoms and extraordinary liberties. I really believe I could say that without exaggerating. Let me also say that I'm speaking here as thus says Scott Catino and certainly not representing any institution, any government agency. I'm speaking on my own accord. I need to, to state that very clearly. Um, I think my perspective, what I bring to this is not just being an academic, but my background working in the field uh, as a practitioner in security studies and not just a professor, having gone to not just Iraq and Afghanistan, pictured there in Saudi Arabia, many other places, the issue of the integrity and the security of the university often comes up. So many times I've sat down with people in other countries, their security and intelligence communities, and they would talk about the university. And sometimes they would ask me on these security related issues, what in the world is going on in your country? Why we allow this? why we have such a situation and we don't stand up. I think we've become so acclimated to the dysfunction and the craziness and even the criminality that we've become a bit numb to this. But in other parts of the world, it's not tolerated. Crime and this type of subversion and sedition, I'm calling it what it is, and even just poor performance is tolerated in our country and other people, they're, they're fired in other countries. So uh, allow me to bring that security practitioner perspective to this in addition to all the great legal perspectives that we're getting and so many extraordinary academics like the individuals here who have uh, architect and really constructed this General Education Act. So we've got an action item here. Really what I'm advocating for is that the citizens of Alabama really have to understand they need this major initiative led by the state legislature. This can't be a good idea, here's a suggestion, let's sign a petition. The reason I say that is because over the last five years or so and longer, those initiatives have failed. We need something that's got a bit of teeth into it. It's got to be state-led and there needs to be a, a true reformation and restore higher education to its essential mission. And that is to prepare knowledgeable, responsible, and productive American citizens. We've lost that. We have to see this for what it is. We're looking at a total failure. And I think as I move along here, it's going to become more obvious. But before we can talk about a comprehensive solution, I think we need to take time here. Not a lot of time. But time to look at the problem a bit more carefully. And I realize I'm speaking to an audience of people that have been active in the field. I'm speaking to people with extensive backgrounds and understanding the threats that have occurred in this state. So I'm going to raise the level of understanding a bit more here 
and get into a little more essential detail. I really believe without exaggeration that what we're dealing with is not a problem, but it is the central problem. Think about this. So many of the issues that I heard today, which are important, I don't want to detract from a single one. So many of those issues come down to individuals, activists, people that are indoctrinated with this horrific communist ideology, call it DI, ESG, CRT, whatever acronym they use to cover their Marxist ideology. So much of it is ideologically driven by these subversive Marxists or the administration and key institutions that should be standing up and saying something about it are so demoralized they can't even look in the right direction, much less stand. And the public sits back and does nothing. I would dare to say that is by and large, not solely, but centrally, the result of the contaminating influence of our universities degrading and demoralizing and indoctrinating and it doesn't just affect individuals it infects entire sectors that's why we're seeing this breakdown and up oh, wrong direction I'm gonna use a word that drives the left crazy the problem is I have to say it in a word voice conspiratorial <laughs> I couldn't say conspiracy one more time conspiratorial <laughs> that word drives them crazy they use it to delegitimize everything we do do you realize that word is a part of our Defart department of defense threat scenario called a conspiracy do you realize when the communists went on their attacks they called it a conspiracy FM 3-22.2 talks about the threat of a conspiracy. Something happening quietly, incrementally, and done inside, creeping into these essential infrastructures of the state or society to destroy that very society. We spend a lot of time in the security sector talking about conspiratorial threats. Take a look at that slide. It's kind of busy, but I like to leave slides that you could look at later. I'll be, you don't have to read every word of this. I post this later so I can give you a product rather than just a bullet point presentation. So I like to do that. Since the time of our uh, early college periods, really even before this, but this is an obvious one, 1962, the Students for a Democratic Society, the radical communist, new left organization under Tom Hayden. He wasn't the first. But he stated it very clearly. What this comes down to is we're going to destroy America, transform it, and the university is going to be the platform. This has been going on quite a long time. Now, decades have passed. They've made quite a bit of an advancement. J. Edgar Hoover knew this. He called attention to this and called out the professors, the students, and the foreign influences that were destroying the universities, creating unrest, and ultimately to be used as platforms to destroy the country. It's much more dangerous than that. I could tell you having analyzed these types of issues around the world and in our country, those networks are deeper, stronger, for, and, and attached to every instrument of power we have in this country, from political to economic to social, etc. It is very, very dangerous. J. Edgar Hoover knew, knew it, we should know it, and be very careful to understand how dangerous this is. Let me just stop for a moment, kind of pause here, and give a little bit of a deeper look at the problem here and understand this is local. This is happening in Alabama at the universities to where people you know and love go to school. So I know sometimes when we think about the problem, we use a singular word like indoctrination. Sure, that occurs. Let me break this down a little bit briefly to show just how dangerous just how deliberate this is. And when I step back and I see this type of work, I look at that and say, this is not the work of amateurs, folks. How many times if I had to look over something classified or unclassified, I was asked, hey, doc, what do you, what do you think of this? I'd say, OK, I know exactly what's going on. Here's what they're doing. This is not the work of amateurs. So that middle line there of agitation, that goes on at universities. They try to create hostility. They try to stay, say things so inflammatory about whites, males, Christians, heterosexual, conservative, constitutional. That's what they're targeting to create anger. An angry person 
as a person that could be controlled. I spoke at a university one time. I was talking on border security. I lived on the border. I wrote a book on the border. I did field studies in Mexico. Got a little dicey when I did that. But I went on the other side. It was a little safer. Um, and uh, we talked quite a bit about it. I was lecturing on it. I had a student stand up and ask a question. I thought it was the Guinness Book of World Records he was dry, uh, striving for. He dropped three F-bombs in about 4.2 seconds. <laughs> I didn't even think that was possible. I doubt I could use that many adjectives in one or two sentences as he did. He was so incredibly irate over this, and that's exactly what they want. Somebody they could control, then they indoctrinate you and you become a part of that system. And we're dealing with something worse than that. We're actually dealing with now people that are being mobilized into action. That's why they're told social justice, our objective is social justice. They have so many people on board, now they're mobilizing them and targeting them so someone like Riley Gaines goes to speak at San Francisco State, I believe, just to give a lecture. She's brought in, oh, mysteriously, the police disappear on this issue. They're pulled back. Both the campus police and then later on the local police kind of pull back. So angry students are coming in. They're assaulting her. They're detaining her. She has to run for her life. And then afterwards, Nothing happens. Nobody gets prosecuted. Student groups stand up and say, yeah, it's good. There should have been violence. And nothing happens. See, people are now being mobilized. Okay, that's kind of the main storyline. But here's something you may not know. One of the most malign tactics these academics use is that tactic of demoralization. There are people in the academic world that never get to that agitation stage. They simply deprive their students of essential information and weave in a cynical or demonization of those very targets I just mentioned. So in other words, if you want to kill someone ideologically, you don't have to shoot them, you starve them. And that's what they do. They deprive them of information. Deprivation and demoralization are also factors that we are now seeing in society. People are so demoralized, the young are so demoralized, they don't stand for anything. And that's exactly the outcome that communists have always used because that's a form of control. And acculturation, sometimes uh, I'll, get the, the, I'll get a little pushback from academics or someone, are you saying we're all conspiratorial? We're all conspiring, we're all Marxists. There's a Marxist under every bed. No, just your bed, not mine. I've long, I've long cleared them out. It's worse than that. They create a culture to where, of hate and rejection of our, our extraordinary constitution. It's such a culture, people get assimilated into that. You go to college today, University of Alabama. You go to orientation, ESG, DEI. You go to a frat, a sorority, you go to a sports game, and it's a pro-LGBTQ message. They have so immersed students into that culture, and third of their classes, they openly state, are filled with DEI ideology. Students have this everywhere. They get assimilated and acculturated into it. It is a horrible technique. The communists have often used it, and victims of communism openly state that it leads to that state of fixation. I'll hear people say, all I hear is race, race, race. That's all they think about, race, race, race. And why do you think that is? I like the old 60s word. They've been so brainwashed into that type of horrific thinking, they've been so brainwashed into it, it creates fixation to where they cannot see otherwise. Victims of communism have said that. They have said that while they lived in a communist state, they could not think otherwise because it so inundated their thinking. So I wanted to go a bit deeper on that because you may have loved ones in that process. You might have family members that you need to say, hey, you need to consider this. You have just been deprived of information or look, you're a goner. You're so fixated on this. This is where the power of the gospel is so critical. We pray, we fast, we use the truth of God, his holy word, and good things happen. I've dealt with quite a few people like that. God's word is powerful. I believe that, I've used that. So let me move past that, but I, th I thought we needed to take that to a higher level. So some will say, wow, it's like that in the Northeast or in San Francisco, not here in Alabama. Let me tell you, you could simply read 
some of these excellent reports like Going Woke in Dixie that give far more details than I can talk about in a short period of time. But here's the bottom line up front. Same players and issues. I think the fact that they're moving slowly, incrementally, and watchfully on something makes it even more dangerous. Because again, I say this as someone who has not just studied this and gone to conferences about it. I've worked cases like this. I've worked people uh, countering these types of issues. These are, this is not the work of amateurs, folks. These are people that are tactically sophisticated. And they have a Dixie strategy. There is something both deeply hateful in their ideology as well as doctrinal, where they love penetrating the deep red, a conservative area. They, they love it to get inside and really undermine and subvert. I love what J. Edgar Hoover said. They're not just practicing deception and deceit. They are deceitful. It's coming right from their character of who they are. So they have that strategy, and they also have a long-term strategy. They feel institutionally they can flip Dixie and turn it into the communist bastion that so many of all the other areas of our country have become. They can do it by getting inside our higher education and getting inside the Southern Baptist Church. And I'm, hear me carefully, I'm not saying every Southern Baptist has gone woke, I didn't say that. But they want to get inside a major church like that that has been a bastion of conservatism. And that's why the Southern Baptists are having so many problems in their seminaries and their churches. And uh, individually, the woke gospel message is coming out. Very, very problematic. So we need to understand that. We need to be very careful about it. Okay, moving along here. So, you know, we look at more locally here. I look at a case like this right in my backyard at uh, South, at the University of South Alabama. When I began to look at this and I say, wow, here's a history department and they are openly supporting Black Lives Matter. Of course, remember what I said, the tactic of deprivation? Why don't they talk about their open admission of communist ideology? Why don't they talk about the leaders of that movement that said their goal is to have like that's the equivalent of an Arab Spring. Mass uprising to overthrow the government. They don't talk about that. They're saying how wonderful they are. This is the civil rights and all this CRT demonizing whites. Big part of their message. And imagine this, demanding mandatory, let's call it what it is, Marxist indoctrination for every person. Staff, professor, and student. That's communism. Look at this idea of diversity. There's no diversity. This is classic communist indoctrination where, and I've been to communist countries. I was a guest of the People's Republic of China 20 years. They were nice. They invited me to their university. I got to study at Beijing University. I've been to Vietnam. And I've seen this. You have to conform. There's no diversity in this. You speak out against it, you're punished, you're ruined in some of the ways we heard talked about today. This is going on right here at South Alabama. And no surprise to see their their hatred of the United States and this Marxist, Marxist culture being promoted. What a terrible thing to say to these students. Let me tell you someone, uh, something. Working with students on a daily basis, true, most of these are military students, but I still teach a little bit of history. And it's hard enough to get through college as it is. When you start to heap the burdens of this oppressive type of ideology on top of it, do you know how painful that is for a student? In addition to such a destructive ideology, this is, this is as, as evil an ideology as it is cruel. Students need to be supported, and they need to be taught the best way to make decisions. That's what education is about. It's an exposure of, obviously, good materials that they can read, as well as things that may challenge their, their beliefs. What a terrible thing that's going on here. So this is what's happening. And you know this DEI ideology. We have to understand a tradecraft term that we use in the intelligence field, and every person should understand it. It's very simple, but I'm going to say it, cover. Do you understand that we're dealing with people that lie and use cover? You have to understand that when you're thinking it, because I hear sometimes someone will say, well, I, I spoke to that person and they said, and I, I try not to look aghast at that kind of conversation, these people will lie to you to your face publicly and make statements because they know there's not going to be a consequence for it. Do you understand what the game is? They stand up, they lie publicly. The media picks it up like Alabama.com. 
which supported Antifa. They run these stories, and then a little blurb comes out later. Someone tries to contradict it. Thank God we have 1819 News. Or I, I, I tell you what, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to put down other platforms and venues that are conservative, but thank God they're a powerful force. I really, really thank God for them. They're, be, they're able to push back. But they know the game, and then it starts to get exposed. Sometimes it picks up enough public attention, and then they say, oh, I'm sorry, I overstated that. It was taken out of contact. No consequences. They know that game. They follow that procedure. When I look at these manuals, and I look at these Marxists, they, that's all they do is talk about tactics, what works, what's effective. They noodle that out constantly. That's their game where we have a life. I, I love you all, but I'm going to go home. I'm already missing my wife. I'm already missing my daughter who's 22, thinks she knows everything, and she, she keeps telling me how dumb I am. I even miss that. <laughs> I got a life. So do you, right? But this is this obsessed type of personality. That's all they're good at. That's why in the history of communism, you will see, and we study this, we study the military science of it, you will see, and I'm sorry, I gotta pay the devil his due here, you will see these brilliant tactical and military operations by the communists. I look at this and I'll tell our fellow soldiers at Intel guy, we need to understand this, this is, this is brilliant tactically. And then when they take power, their country dissolves and descends into chaos because they're great at the art of war and lying and deceiving and deception, but they can't run a country. Right. It's, it's, it's the same problem Satan has. Jesus said the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. He's a master at that, but he can't create anything. Right. Right. And that's exactly where, where the communists, the Marxists are at. They use all these terms, race, gender, Disability, yeah, these are great for discussion. It's, racism's bad. Discriminating on the basis of gender is bad. But that's exactly what they're doing. They're using the cover word. They're using race to attack whites because they want to destroy this so-called capitalist system. Don't get me wrong, I think this is horrendously bad for blacks. If I was an African American and told I am nothing but a victim, when God's word tells me the sky's the limit, it's only circumscribed by God's will for my life and my own sin that gets in the way. And these people tell me that I'm nothing but a victim? That's bad enough. And guess who's going to rescue me? The state. What a dismal, horrible, empty, materialistic message. So they're racist. They exploit the disabled. They manipulate the gender and they take the sexual into orientation to a revolutionary level. Let's call it what it is. So that's what's going on. So understand the problem. It's certainly conspiratorial. It's certainly central. It's local. This is, a, this is, this is an issue right in our backyard. That's one of those busy slides that communication experts say never give. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to read all of it, but I do want to leave you a product afterwards. If you go to our Facebook page, or one of our websites. I post this afterwards so you have, a, you have a product. But the bottom line is this is a critical central problem and it's comprehensive. Just because some department that you may know or some professor you know isn't woke and on the Marxist bandwagon doesn't mean the system isn't. I don't have time to talk about their professional organizations, the key administrators, their networks, who they're involved in. That entire system has been institutionalized, networked, and it's a national problem. Really, it's international. So obviously what's gonna be needed is something comprehensive. And that's where I think this extraordinary legislation, this General Education Act is so powerful. I see it as a refinement and an evolution of so many attempts that have failed. I thank God for people, I, I work for a Christian private institution, I thank God for the movement that says, why are we even talking about us? Let's pull our kids out. Why are they even going to a school like this? Let me tell you something, that's good for some people. I, like I said, I support that. I believe in that. That's where I work. But if we leave these bastions of social contamination and Marxism in check, is that what you really want to happen and watch the whole country to go down while we're on our islands thinking we're safe? That's not the way it's going to work, folks. We need something comprehensive. So leading scholars like Stanley Kurtz and others, Jenna Robinson and David Randall, extraordinary people, 
have addressed this issue comprehensively. And that's what I think is needed. When I first read this, I remember when you kind folks asked me to talk about this, I thought, well, let me look it over first. I'm really impressed with this because it's a comprehensive solution addressing government, academic leadership, the entire educational mission, the institutional structures, the curriculum, and our public interest. Don't I have something in this? Don't we, as citizens of the United States and Alabama, have something at stake? And what happens with our institution? The GEA says yes. So let me briefly talk about that in the time I have left, because I know someone's going to come up with that big hook and yank me off the stage, and that could be a little embarrassing. Because if I fall, it's, it's going to make a crash. All right. So what are the major aspects of it? It's really based on organizational and personnel reform. I really like this. There's the first point I'll briefly say. It's got to be legislation, legislature-led. This can't be another let's promise or let's commit, let's sign, let's... It's got to come from, it's got to have some teeth in it. It's got to be a state law that's already crafted here that's passed with Alabama's uh, stamp on it that says, no, it's going to be done this way. And here's the key organizational change. They are going to, according to this law, set up an independent school of, ed of education. That's going to become the center of it. Why I like that? Because if you try to force the Marxists to comply, they're not. They're going to come up with new and clever ways just to sink your legislation. Hey, how did that whole no, no safe havens for illegals, how'd that work out? Now we got sanctuary cities, entire cities. You know, it's a criminal offense to harbor an illegal. How's that being enforced? Now it's the opposite. If you don't help them, you're criminalized. You see where I'm going with this? This has to be done legislatively, and it's got to have an organizational element where an independent school of education is set up in the key flagship institutions with fresh blood of professors pumped into it. What good is it in these programs where you bring the Marxists in? They're going to want to come in regardless. Oh, yeah, I'm on board. And they come in and destroy it. That's their game. That's the strength of it. The personnel aspect, recruiting qualified people that are involved in this. And that, that's a big subject in and of itself, and I don't have time to speak on it, but let me just say this, and I know it's going to sound provocative. There are so many unqualified professors. They are so horribly qualified. Let me tell you, I've been at, I gotta stop here because it's just gonna make me laugh. I have been at conferences where I heard such maddening stupidity and out of sheer embarrassment, I didn't want to say anything. And you know what that comes from? When you go down that political path and you don't know anything about your subject field, that's a problem. And they are so wrapped around, fixated, on this DEI, you ask them about their subject matter, they don't know anything. And I'm telling you, I have seen that again and again to the point where it's embarrassing. That's the type of ignorance. So I love the fact that they said, look, we got to get some qualified people in there that got a heart for this and are qualified. It's very, very important. And to have a curriculum that is based on history, humanities, arts, literature. Now, it's not a four syllabus, but saying this information has to be covered. So the radical Marxist professors scream, what a terrible thing. You're, I, you're lo I'm losing my freedom of speech. You're, you're de denying me my academic freedom. No, it's called setting standards. Here's an unclassified version of what the intelligence community has to, to go by. This is called Intelligence Community Directive 203. We live by this. So when I'm working on an official assignment, I have to have information that says timely, where I know the sources. I have to separate fact from argument. I have to give alternative scenarios. There's a long list. It's called standards. These are the only people that want no standards. Many of them should be arrested for criminality. And I mean that, for actually calling for violence against the state. That's a criminal offense. Many of them should be checked on their, on eth their lack of ethics by promoting DEI and saying whites are demons. And then there's a, another level. A lot of these people should be fired just because they're horrible professors and don't know their field. So there has to be a qualitative factor. I guess that's my time right there. <laughs> I think that's what that is. So this is a very important legislation. I'll, oh, see, I came to the conclusion. 
<laughs> Somebody said, oh. <laughs> so I, this, is, this is so important. The citizens of Alabama really need this GA. It's got to offset the destructive developments of higher education, harming society, and responsible citizenship. It is just important. Now, somebody would say, Catino, did I get this right? Did you just stand up there for 28.23 minutes and tell us we need to impose a system, start firing a lot of people, and shifting resources? Yes, because the system is that broken. Let me tell you, let me tell you something else. Thank you. I did say that. Let me tell you something else. The bad guys are already doing that. You read some time, read this. I don't have the time to talk about it. Read this Going Woke in Dixie where it analyzes their strategic plans for the University of Alabama. It's taken every one of those single areas that I talked about and says we're going to drive it deeper into the DEI Marxist agenda. They're already doing that. They're putting their finger on faculty, who they're going to select, how they're going to be promoted, what's going to happen with students, what kind of culture is going to be created, what kind of funding is going to happen, all based on DEI. We have no choice but to do that. And if we don't do it, we're going to be swept away with their anti-GEA act that they're implementing. That's the choice we have. This is nothing radical. This is something that is absolutely necessary, given the severity of the problem. Thank you very much. Questions, I believe, I, I've come okay, in. You have a question, you come right up, but I, I want to break it down one more time and thank you for a great explanation of the problem. One, the, this, in your packet, I want to make sure every, we intentionally put these things in order of the speakers. There's a flyer for just about every speaker that spoke, and this is called the General Education Act. It's just a one pager and it tells you exactly what this does. Do y'all remember when you used to have to take it, when you went to college, most of you probably had to take some kind of civics course, American history or something in college. Well, they don't do that anymore. Now it's general education and you can take uh, women's studies or you know anything else that now counts as that course. This would legislate that our tax paying, uh, our universities that we pay into would have to teach courses on American history and get back to our civics roots is one of the great things. And it also will demolish the DEI departments in these colleges. So it's a very important piece of legislation. If anyone has a question, come up, uh, come on up, Julia and Terry. Republican woman coming forward, Terry LaPlante. Chair, come up. So there, I covered an article of a professor at William and Mary College, William Dwight, who, um, who, who said that parents have get our right of their parents' child relationship from the government. It is the state who decides that. And, and, and I, the more I dug into this, I found out here by Ms. Elizabeth Bartlett, they are influencing policy for so they teach um, law and family law and social services. They affect child protective services, which leads to human trafficking. How do we combat that kind of garbage impacting our legislators and policy? Well, we talked about the GA. Do we need to have an institutional approach to this. It has to be because of the fact that the bad guys are attacked. It only makes sense to be able to meet that where the threat is most salient. But also individually, we got we to take, take care of our own spiritual lives. Now's not a time to be either backslidden or lukewarm in our faith. This is the time where we need, we need all the power of heaven. And we need that to be asserted in our family. We need to stand up to whoever, whatever loved them in our family, to speak the truth and to be the best parent we can make. So we have to take our role in our family and our community and get involved. But we're here to talk about the legislation. That's a good question. So I think individually, as far as the family, community, and definitely institutionally, if I go through something like a GA. So one of the questions that Julia was going to ask, and by the way, Julia, raise your hands so everyone can see you. This is Julia Cleveland, and she lives in Trestville. She runs the action group up there, and she is at the legislature a lot of times as a citizen lobbyist working on these bills. Her question was, do we have a bill written and who is sponsoring it? And the answer is yes, we have a bill and we are looking for sponsors. So be uh, on the lookout. Yes, this is very important and 
we're really hoping to get that book out. Perfect. Anything else? Any last words? No, that's that's all for me. Thank you so much. Thank you for your expertise. Thank you. Thank you.